Hello again, everybody, and uh, if you haven't watched any of my videos, my name is Sophie Karras, and this week I'm going to go through a couple math word problems with you guys. So today we're going to go through three word problems. Um, the first one gets is pretty easy, the second one's okay too, and the third one gets a little bit more challenging. So don't get overwhelmed if you can't do some of the math that I'm presenting. Um, feel free to practice any other way, or if you haven't learned it in class yet, just don't worry about it, okay? Um, it's mostly going to be focusing on multiplication, so you should have some idea about your times tables and things like that and can definitely answer some of the multiplication questions. Okay, so this first word problem. So this is actually a real thing that I have to figure out right now. Um, this weekend, I am going hiking in Michigan, and Franklin, my dog, is coming with us, and we have to pack enough food for him so that he can eat and have enough food while we're away. So Franklin eats two times per day, and each of his meals is two and a half scoops of food, or 2.5 scoops of food. Like I said, he's coming with me hiking this weekend, um, so how many scoops of food do I need to bring with me for a four-day trip? And how many meals total will that be? Okay, so let's start breaking this down. So let's first start with how many meals are we going to need? So pulling from that word problem, I said he eats two meals per day and we're gonna be gone for four days. So how would you figure out how many meals I have to pack for this four day trip? So you would simply do four times two, right? Do you know what that is in your head already? Yep, four times two equals eight meals. So I have to have eight meals prepared for Franklin for our trip. Okay, so now, Let's move on to how many total scoops of food do we need to pack for Franklin? So when I'm scooping into this bag today, how many scoops do I need for that four day trip? So let's go back to that word problem. And in the word problem, I said each meal is 2.5 scoops. And like we just figured out, there will be eight meals total for those four days right? Because we figured the eight meals total out from the previous problem. So we could do this a couple different ways. We could break down the eight meals and just do how many scoops per day, then multiply by four. So that would be 2.5 times two would give me how many scoops I would have to pack per fr for Franklin per day and then multiply that answer by four to get how many scoops total, or we can just take the eight times the 2.5 to get the same answer, okay? So method one, like I was just saying, is in the previous slide was let's just take 2.5 times eight. Okay, so first, we're going to multiply the 5 times the 8, right? Should have asked you that a second ago, but what's that? That's 40. So you put the 0 directly under the 8. Let me see if I can. So you do 5 times 8 gives you the 0 and the 4 for 40, right? You put the 4 above the 2. And then you do 8 times 2. And what is 8 times 2? 8 times 2 is 16, but then you add the 4 on top of the 2, correct? So what would be 16 plus 4 then? Yep, 16 plus 4 then would be 20. So then you would write 2, 0, and then you have the 0 from the 8 times 5. So now, what to do with that decimal place? Well, there's only one decimal place in this problem, in this formula that we wrote out. So you just move one place over and drop the decimal right there. And that gives you 20. All right, now let's see if this works if we do the second method, which was multiplying first to see how many scoops we would need 
per day. So that'll be 2.5 times 2 because Franklin eats two times a day. So once again, we're going to start right here, straight up and down, all the way to the right. What is 5 times 2? 5 times 2 is 10, right? So we put the 0 right under and the 1 above the 2 over here. So then what is 2 times 2? That's correct. 2 times 2 is 4, and then we add the 1 again. So that gives you 5. And then just like above, you only have one decimal place in the problem we wrote out. So you only move the decimal place over 1 and put it right there to give you five scoops per day, right? Because this was figuring out how many scoops Franklin needs per day. Okay, so we know it's five scoops per day and we know we are gone for four days, right? So then we can multiply five times four to get how many scoops for the whole trip. And five times four equals 20, correct? So 20 scoops is how many scoops I'm going to have to pack for Franklin for our trip this weekend. All right, now feel free to watch that again if you want to go through that again. And at the end, I'm sharing the Khan Academy resource. I don't know if you've ever used that, but you're, please ask your parents if you can visit their site. And it can teach you a little bit more about multiplication and multiplication with decimals if you haven't learned that already in class or if you want a little bit of a review. All right, so Franklin says thank you, everyone, for helping him out. He's a hungry boy, and he likes eating food a lot. <laughs> okay, so our next word problem. If you've ever watched SpongeBob, you know Mr. Krabs really likes his money. So Mr. Krabs wants to increase how much money he makes from his Krabby Patties so that he can make more money. Each Krabby Patty costs him 75 cents to make, and Mr. Krabs wants to make $3.50 in profit per Krabby Patty. So how much should Mr. Krabs charge for his Krabby Patty? How much profit will Mr. Krabs make if he sells 25 Krabby Patties in one day? Okay, so let's break this down. It's a little bit overwhelming to look at it all at once, but we'll break it down in the next few slides. So, how much should Mr. Krabs charge per Krabby Patty to make $3.50 in profit for each patty? Well, that's pretty simple, right? It costs him 75 cents to make a patty. So if he wants to make $3.50 in profit, which means he doesn't have to spend that money for the stuff to make the patty. You would just add those two together and charge the customer that added sum so that you make $3.50 in profit, okay? So then what would be $3.50 plus 75 cents? Now you might already be able to do this in your head, but if not, that's okay. I wrote it out for you, all of us, so $3.50 plus 75 cents. So we'll start with the 0 plus 5 would give you 5. And then moving on, the 5 plus 7 would be 12. So you put the 2 here and bring the 1 over here. Then you move that decimal place straight down. It's different from multiplication. And then you would do 3 plus 0 is 3 plus the 1 would give you 4. So for a total of $4.25 is how much Mr. Krabs needs to charge his customers so that he can make $3.50 for each Krabby Patty sold. Okay? All right, so how much profit if 25 Krabby Patties are sold in one day? So let's write this out. So like we said in the statement, if Mr. Krabs is going to make $3.50 in profit per patty sold, and there's 25 patties sold in that day, how would we figure that out? That's right, we just multiply those two numbers. So we would do $3.50 times 25 to get how much money Mr. Krabs makes if he sells 25 patties in a day. 
Okay, so let's do this problem. So $3.50 times 25, right? Just like we said on the previous slide. So first, as you can see with the blue arrow, we are multiplying zero times five. And what does that give you? That's right, it gives you zero like I wrote right underneath. Um, so before I click the next button, what are we multiplying next? That's right, we're gonna do five times five. And five times five gives us, that's correct, 25. So we write that five underneath and drag the two up above the three. So what numbers are we gonna multiply next then? That's right, three times five, which gives us 15, that's correct. So, but we have to add the two, right? So what's 15 plus two? 17. And you can just write the 17 right underneath because that's our last multiplication before moving on to the two in the 25. So we have 1750 right there. And next, we have to move down another row and continue multiplying so that we can use that two. So we have to write a zero underneath. And that doesn't have to do with any multiplying. That is just the way you multiply bigger numbers. So that's why I highlighted it green here. It's just put a zero underneath and then move on to the zero times two, which gives you zero. And then what we would, would we move on to next? Yep, the five times two, which gives you 10, correct. So again, we're writing a third zero underneath the seven, but and then dragging the one above the three. And make sure, as you can see earlier, we crossed out that two because we already used it. Okay, so what are we multiplying next? The three times two. And what's three times two again? That's right, it's six, and then we're adding that one to give us seven. So now we have seven, zero, zero, zero in that row. So what now what do we do? That's right, we add those two bottom numbers. So we add one, seven, five, zero, plus seven, zero, zero, zero. And that would give us, so let's start with the zero times, plus zero, zero, five plus zero, five, seven plus zero, seven, and one plus seven would give you eight. So then now what about that decimal place? Well, earlier we had one decimal place, so we just moved our decimal over one for the answer. But here you can see I drew with the purple pen, there's two decimal places for the five and the zero. So we're gonna move our decimal over twice in the answer, as you can see with those blue lines. And that gives us $87.50. The total amount Mr. Krabs will make in one day if he sells 25 Krabby Patties and makes $3.50 per Krabby Patty. Pretty cool, right? All right, so let's move on to the last problem. Um, this one tests quite a few different multiplication timetable things, and it might get a little bit complicated, but that's okay. So. Let me read this for you guys. You really want to play with your friend, but your mom said you have to do some chores first. Ew. Your friend wants to know about how long it will take before you can go play outside. Your chores include vacuuming three rooms and folding your clothes. You must fold six t-shirts, four pairs of pants, and seven pairs of socks. It takes you 20 seconds to fold a shirt, 10 seconds to fold your pants, for each pair of pants and five seconds for each pair of socks. It takes you 15 minutes to vacuum one room. How long should you tell your friend to wait? Okay, so let's break this. Okay, guys, let's break this. So once again, let's start with, let's just figure out how long the vacuuming is gonna take on its own. So like we said previously, it's three rooms and it takes you 15 minutes per room. So we should do 15 times three, right? So I'll draw, I drew this right below for you guys, now using a pink pen. So 15 times three, what is five times three? 15, yep, I wrote it there. So the five down below and you drag the one over. And then one times three gives you three, yep. And then add the one to give you four. So a total of 45 minutes for all of the vacuuming you have to do. That's a lot of vacuuming. 
All right, so now how long for the folding? So like we said, the shirts, we're doing six shirts, 20 seconds each, so six times 20. For the pants, four pants at 10 seconds each, so four times 10. Seven pairs of socks at five seconds each, so seven times five. So a couple of these are pretty easy multiplications, right? So what's seven times five? That's right, that's 35 seconds. Okay, and next let's do, just start from the top again. So the shirts, 20 times six. So like we were doing earlier, you can do zero times six, like the pink arrow shows, gives you zero. And then what's two times six? That's right, 12. So that would give you 120 seconds total for folding your shirts. Now for those pants, 10 times four, the four times zero is zero, like it shows in the picture. And then four times one? Four, so 40 seconds total for folding those pants. So now how do we get all these seconds added together, right? To get the total amount of time for folding. So we would do 120 plus 40 plus 35. So you can pause this for a second and do that if you want on a piece of paper. The answer is 195 seconds for folding. Okay, but now what do we do with this numbers, right? We have minutes and seconds. How can we get this all into minutes? So if you feel comfortable, you can convert the seconds to minutes using division. So we added up a total of 205 seconds of folding, 120 seconds for the shirts, 40 seconds for the pants, and 35 seconds for your socks. Now we know there's 60 minutes sorry, 60 seconds in one minute, right? So just basically you could do long division and do 205 divided by 60. Um, I'm gonna give you an answer here in a minute. It's okay if you guys maybe haven't done long division yet or if you had, go, have, go ahead and try to give this a shot. Um, you can kind of toy around with numbers to figure out how many 60s fit into 205 or you can break up the numbers like we have above. So 100 and like I show right here, what is 60 times 2? That is 120, right? So 120 seconds is 2 minutes. So we can just cross that out and put 2 minutes right there. And then how many more seconds would you need to add to 40 to give you 60 seconds. 20, right? 40 seconds plus 20 seconds would give you 60 seconds. So if you took 20 seconds from the socks and added it to the 40, that gives you one minute. So then how much would you have left with the socks? 15 seconds, right? So then that was two minutes with the shirts, one minutes combining these, and 15 seconds gives you three minutes and 15 seconds. So that's one way if you feel very overwhelmed with a problem, you can try to break it up into little parts and put it back together again. If that didn't make sense to you at all, please do not worry about it. If you haven't learned long division yet or any of that, you will learn it in the years to come. All right, guys, so let's put all of this together now. So it was 45 minutes total to vacuum, three minutes and 15 seconds total to fold. So how do we get the total in time? Add those two together. So we add 45 minutes plus three minutes and 15 seconds, or just add the 45 plus the three and then put the 15 on the end to give you 48 minutes and 15 seconds before you can go play with your friend. Pretty easy to do really, right? Okay, hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed these word problems. I had fun making them for you. Um, if you're having some trouble with any of this, please just start with the basics of your timetables and getting those multiplications down well and writing out and finding problems and just working them out on your own. Feel free to watch this video again and maybe try to do the word problem on your own before looking at the answers or whichever way works for you. Um, and please ask your parents. Um, they can talk to your teacher and find more resources if you wanna get better at this. Uh, there's also the Khan Academy website. Um, I linked the page that helps teach multiplication and division. If you wanna go through that again, ask your parents if you can visit that website to 
get a little bit better at the math. All right, everyone, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed.